The Hyksosmos probably is derived from the Egyptian words Hakka Hasut or without all the h -h 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 -h, simply meaning foreign rulers. So you see, it's not a name that describes an ethnic identity, a people or a nation, which is kind of like the Habiru, which are also candidates in some people's eyes for the ancient Israelites. Habiru, just like Hyksos, is not a name of a specific people or nation. It's a social status description, meaning invading nomads. Okay, now, the invasion or accelerated migration of Hyksos into Egypt is dated to somewhere around 1780 to 1750 BCE. And the actual ruling dynasty of the Hyksos pharaohs lasted from about 1670 to 1530 BCE, while their decline starts basically at about 1570 BCE, and their actual final defeat is in 1530 BCE, when their last pharaoh, Hamudi, is driven out of the last stronghold in modern-day Gaza by the Egyptian pharaoh known as Ahmose I. And we'll get back to Ahmose regarding his Tela, which you also go into in your video. But in any case, I would like to go now into some mm, biblical chronology. Because I want to see when the Bible suggests the Exodus actually happened. Now, according to the ages of Abraham and Jacob and some years that were given in the book of Exodus, we get the year 1252 BCE. Wow, that's exact. Now, back then, the pharaoh of Egypt was known as Ramses the Great, and he reigned from 1279 until 1213 BCE. And Ramses the Great is often regarded as the greatest pharaoh ever, and he's probably the most celebrated and the most powerful of all pharaohs. And actually, his successors throughout history called him the Great Ancestor. And actually, in one of his many military campaigns in Canaan, one of his sons chased the Shasu tribe, also themselves candidates of ancient Israelites, all the way through the Negev Desert until the Dead Sea. And another son of his, known as Merneptah, was the one who, according to his own accords, defeated a people known as Israel in the land of Canaan. And Merneptah, who left us with the Merneptah Stella, also known as the Israel Stella, is the one who left us with the first non-biblical record of a people known as Israel being situated in the land of Canaan at about 1200 BCE. Now, on the other hand, if you're going according to the Book of Kings and the reign of King Solomon, then you get to the year 1478 BCE. Well, close, but not close enough. In any case, the pharaoh back then is supposed to be Thutmose the third. Now, Thutmose is regarded as a military genius by historians. Actually, he is referred to as the Napoleon of Egypt. And he's actually very famous for the battle in Megiddo, where he defeated a huge coalition of Canaanites led under the king of Kadesh. Now, you see, both of these pharaohs and the times associated with the Exodus in the Bible lead us to a very weird thing about the Exodus. Because if you are fleeing the Egyptians into Canaan, well, it makes just as much sense as fleeing the Nazis into occupied Austria. Okay? This is not a great survival strategy. But also, I want you to look at all the differences in the accounts of the Hyksos and the Israelites as they appear in the Bible. Okay, 
First and foremost, the Hyksos were rulers of Egypt. They were not slaves. Also, the Hyksos were defeated in a well-documented war and driven out of Egypt. They were not let out after some sort of catastrophic event or something of the sort. But most importantly, the time span is all wrong. Because you see, the Bible says the Israelites have been in Egypt for about 430 years, right? Now, Hazal, the rabbinical sages, say it's about 210 years. But the thing is that the Hyksos ruled Egypt for about 150 years, which is nowhere close to either of those numbers.